Honestly, I believe the first thought people have when they walk in here and see my collection is, what is wrong with this guy? I decided to arrange my living room in this way really to celebrate the diversity of Transformers. Every display case in this living room represents a slightly different type of Transformer. I like his place and he's very tidy, very organized, so he looks really nice. Now this case here represents the first generation of Transformers. Guy over here, Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots. Now this guy is one of the ones I always wanted as a kid and didn't manage to get until I was much older. And the ironic part about that is he was my favorite character. The bottom shelf is where we have the bad guys. So back there is the original Megatron who turned into a gun. And to the side, Soundwave who became a cassette player. And the little cassette guys that would go inside Soundwave when they turn into tapes. Alternators are real licensed vehicles that you'll see on the street today. Um, a Mazda RX-7, a Skyon, a Corvette, uh, the Ford Mustang, and they become classic Transformers characters, and these have become very popular with fans. This is Nemesis Prime. He was extremely limited to 3,000 pieces. I personally had to bid on about three or four eBay auctions before I could get my hands on this guy. And even then, I paid much more for him than I should justifiably have to pay for anything. This guy is a combination of Ultra Magnus and Optimus Prime, known as Omega Prime. This little construction vehicle here actually is a transformer and becomes a robot. So, just a turn here, a twist there, and look at that little guy. This guy cost me about $65 back in the early 90s. He currently goes mint in box for well over $300. And the day I got him, I remember how excited I was ripping him out of the box, taking him out, and you would think, oh, he's worth so much money. Why would you ever take something like that out? But it's not about that to me. To me, it's about taking it out, experiencing it, you know, transforming it, getting to know the toy, and not just looking at it through a window in a box. That pink and white robot in the back is actually a female Transformer named RC. That is probably the most feminine you will ever see a Transformer get. Now, Transformers just aren't action figures anymore, and that's what this shelf is all about. What I reserved this for was displaying more high-end collectibles. And most of those are comprised of props, statues, both full body and busts. This series called Beast Wars was one of my favorites and is near and dear to my heart because I also helped out with the television show. I was fortunate enough to get involved with the writers who were working on the show at the time. And eventually this culminated in my name appearing in the credits of three episodes at the end of the second season. When BotCon 2005 was being planned, Hasbro asked fans to be brought in to help out the organizers. And what I was able to do was help Fun Publications, the folks who run BotCon, create this exclusive set of toys that was only released at that convention. File cards had to be written, meaning names, statistics, weapons, abilities, weaknesses, and I was able to do that. This was a thrill to have something official that I knew I had contributed to. And all these characters here represent a contribution to the Transformers universe that's never going to go away. What's unique about my collection is not only the size, but the way that's displayed. A lot of people will be like, wow, you have an amazing collection, but not only that, I can see it. So this is the crux of my collection. We got a lot of figures over here, as you can see. If you're a huge fan and you sort of don't complete something, you'll always feel like, well, what type of fan am I? And I'm a huge fan, so uh, huge fans pretty much are completionists. He really wanted all of them, so I encouraged him that if that's what he really wants, he should go out and get it. I have about over 90% of the American Transformers out there. I'm trying to finish it. I got this one figure, a really beat up Astro Train from my grandmother that she had found. And uh, this was my first Transformer that I ever got. I didn't really know what it was until later. Uh, little does she know what this started. She still doesn't know what this started. <laughs> For me, it's like uh, a holiday every time I get an item. I know it sounds weird considering I get a couple items a week, but to me, opening up that box every single time, I get just such enjoyment out of it. This was also another uh, Transformer that means a lot to me. This Transformer, my parents gave it to me to sort of keep me quiet on a plane. <laughs> when I walk into the room every day, I can get instant satisfaction seeing my, my Transformers. Uh, these two storybooks are um, see the pictures, hear the story, read the book. 
for those young kids out there, predates your time. It's not a CD. Up to the right over here is my tall shelf, all the figures that can't fit in the small ones. So there are a lot of tall figures that just go back. Your token bobblehead, what collection is complete without a bobblehead doll? Over here we have a lot of items. We range from comics to books to uh, rare Japanese board games. I also have um, some 3D jigsaw puzzles where the same pieces can make the car and the robot. So sort of like a transforming 3D transformer puzzle, which is unique. We're now leaving the main part of my collection, coming to the rest of my collection. So these are our, my larger fi action figures. We have some rare items, including a Japanese Beast Wars recolor of Triptychon in the back. There are times where I do think that the money could be better spent, but it's less so much as actually being spent as my need to hoard money and save up. So it's not like it would be doing anything that practical. It would just be sitting in the bank. It definitely is an obsession. And sometimes I look back and I'm saying, wow, I got a lot of figures very fast. I'm thinking, well, I'm spending a lot of money. Now, once I'm done back collecting, obviously then there's only present and future collecting. The other thing is, is that now is the time to really collect. Once we have kids, you know, monetary situations are gonna change. I think that it's either now or never. Because if I don't spend now, then it's gonna have to be until my kids move out of the house. And by then, things are gonna be completely different. Back when I was a young lad of, say, 12 years old, and I was still heavily into Transformers, and uh, people, my friends and I, would sit around and say, you know what would be great if they did this? What if they did that? Why did they never make a toy of this guy? The Fan Advisory Board is made up of four key Transformers fans that Hasbro hand-selected to help out uh, design and suggest future product. I'm one member, and combined, we offer a very wide range of perspectives on product, and our job is to come together, put our heads together, and come up with ideas, but it's all electronic and by phone. We never actually sit around at a round table and discuss this because of our physical distance. Now, Transformers, have always had a TV show, they've always had toys. But one for a while, there wasn't a show on the US, only in Japan. So what did we have in the US? We had comic books. This is a hardcover collection of that first iconic series. One of the great things about being involved in official Transformers product is you begin to meet people who are